the answers come, the situations change, and we're seeing a lot of that. And that is exciting. And I just love it, and I just welcome everybody who's watching by Facebook. Just want to say welcome. Glad you're here. But I am excited for what God is doing. And uh, <clears throat> just from what, it wasn't long ago, you know, the Lord said he was going to, he's ready or giving new territory uh, in, in, um, in healing, um, to learn, to be revealed. And, you know, that is something that we're taught to rise up and take it. You know, we aren't going to be sitting and going, well, when, Lord, when, or how, Lord. I believe he's equipped us and has taught us that, you know, we, we say, yes, Lord. We receive that, Lord. And, Lord, you know, what do you have for us? You know, that's how we receive what, when the words go forth, when the prophecies go forth. Yes, it is in his timing. But when we hear that, it builds our faith. And what's our, res our response to that, f that word? You know, by our faith, we respond and we say, yes, Lord. And I receive it. And that's just what I want to uh, touch on tonight, share. It's kind of a, a little repeat. I don't think anybody was here on Wednesday or yeah, last Wednesday night when I shared. So I can kind of do what Sherry did this morning. I can repeat a little bit and add to it. But <clears throat> I just believe the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, in John 16, 13, it says, let me just read that real quick. And before we read, we're just going to praise the Lord and thank him. Father God, we praise you and we worship you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're revealing to us. Thank you, Father, that you are just laying it out before us, and we are walking in it. We're receiving it. We're taking hold of it. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your love. I thank you, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you give us direction. You reveal your word. You unfold things to us as we, uh, as we need it, Father God. But, Lord, most of all, we come before you and just praise you and thank you that you are so good, and we just thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Father, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that reveals the truth about you and about your word to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are alert and active over your word to produce it in our lives, that as the seed is planted in our spirits it grows it develops lord god it renews our mind it changes our circumstances and so father for that we say thank you thank you thank you in jesus name amen so john 16 13 says but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you unto all the truth the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. And I just love, hello, welcome. <laughs> Glad you guys are here. But I just love that, you know, this is what he does. The Holy Spirit, he will announce and declare to us the things that are to come that will happen in the future. And that is revelation knowledge that is to come, that is to happen in our lives. And so when we hear the word decreed or, or spoken or a word of prophecy that says, I'm going to give you new territory in the realm of healing and, and you're going to walk in new places. Well, that's to come. And, and that's when we say, yes, thank you, Lord. I received that. And um, there's somebody else coming. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just 
glad for what the Holy Spirit is teaching us. And I believe we're going to be learning more when it comes to healing on the keys to receiving. And this is what has, he's been speaking to me more about, is how to receive. And Sherry has, been t has touched on the um, a great, I mean, just n not touched, but the main thing is the praise and worship. And, uh, and that's what I want to go into, too. But uh, there, there's keys to receiving. And we, don't, we want that revelation knowledge, how to receive. God's provided it. He's made provision. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was such a sweet time on Sunday night, uh, two weeks ago, I believe, uh, of, of praise and just worship in the spirit. And to me, that is, that's not, just like as Sherry was talking about, you know, when we come and we gather together, you know, we, we are singing songs, but we're also, you know, in those songs, we're decreeing truths. We're decreeing tr truths about, the, about God and who he is and, and what he's provided. But we're also receiving during that time. That's the time when we are receiving all that our Father says he is, all that he says he does. That's that action you take. And you receive at that time. And uh, I'll share the word that I want to read again, the word, because this is what I shared along the lines of uh, Wednesday. And the word that came forth that night, uh, but I don't want to get too far ahead of me, <clears throat> ahead of that. But um, there was just such a sweetness. And that's just what the presence of the Lord is. When you, when you open your heart to enter in, to that secret place that Sherry talked about, that secret place that is always is, is the abiding presence of God in us is what it is. That's why we can take it anywhere we go. We don't have to be in a secret place to get into the secret place, or we don't have to be in a little place set aside to get, but it's in us. And yes, there's those times of focus, but as Sherry said today, whatever we're doing, we can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We can draw on His presence. We can draw on the power of the Holy Spirit resident within us. Thank God for the power and that we acknowledge that power. It's not just that, well, the Holy Spirit came and did the work of salvation in my life, but the Holy Spirit came with power. That was, this, you know, he did come to do the work of salvation. But then as we acknowledge his power, he fills us and we walk in that power. And that's where the revelation knowledge of God and, and the, his word uh, becomes more alive to us. And uh, we just grow in, and in, in ways that we, that you can't without the power of the Holy Spirit working. Um, we praise to receive what God has provided, not to get what God has provided. And I think that's one of the keys. We praise to receive what he's already provided. Sometimes we think we need to praise to get him to provide it. And there's a difference. Because, yes, you may, want, you, you may need the manifestation of what he's provided. But as far as God going back to the cross, giving Jesus, Jesus bearing it again, no, that's never going to happen. He's already done it. He's already made provision for it. Um, and so we, that praise and worship is thanking him for what he has already provided. For what he's already done in us. Um, for what he's already made available. Um, and the place of praise and worship we come into because we know. And what is it we know? We know the Father is good, and he only gives good. And that's another key. If you are thinking, well, the Father may not give, or the Father sometimes, you know, gives bad, that's false, that's wrong, God doesn't operate that way. And that can hinder us from receiving. In James 1.17, it tells us he, only, he, 
he gives us good gifts. Let's just, I want to read that. Um, I don't want to rely on my reciting it. Every good gift. Now that we're talking about our Father God, He's good. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of light, whom there can be no variation or shadow cast by His turning. Every good gift comes from Him. So if you're thinking, well, He sends the bad, or there's these bad things that happened, and well, it was God who who did it, it God's in control of it all and and all that no God's a good father and he only gives good I want to also go to Jeremiah 33 I want to hear here's another in the Old Testament God was revealed as a good God and he pointed to Jesus throughout the whole Old Testament and he was revealing who Jesus was was going to be and what he and and uh, what was going to happen when he'd come but in 33 Jeremiah 33 verse 6 behold in the future restored Jerusalem I will lay upon it health and healing and I will cure them and will reveal to them the abundance of peace prosperity security stability and truth and see and now Jesus has come Jesus has provided all that. Now, yes, in the Old Testament, it was pointing to Jesus. It was pointing to what was coming, what God was in store to to provide and what he had and who he, what kind of, you know, things he was going to provide through Jesus. But we can read that in the Old Testament now and say, thank you, God. I have health. You've given me healing. I have the abundance of peace and prosperity and security and stability in my life. And truth, the truth of his word. And it just reveals who God is. He's a good, good God. He's a good, good father. And in Jeremiah 31, let me just go to that real quick and give you that. 31, 14, it says, I will satisfy fully the life of the priests with abundance And my people will be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. He's good. And he gives us good things. And the place of praise and worship we come to because we know Jesus is the source. And we make him our source for everything. And I believe that's another key to receiving is when you settle it, in your heart, and you meditate on it and let that produce the life it needs to produce in you, that Jesus is my source, and it's final. He is my source for healing, and that doesn't mean you don't go to the doctors. But when you have it settled that he's your source for health, he's your source for healing, you look to him then. He's provided it, you thank him for it, you receive it, and you do what he tells you to do concerning the problem, concerning the situation, concerning the attack. What is the strategy I need to know about this situation in my life? Lord, what do you want to say to me? I read in your word, your word says, you will satisfy fully my life, and I will be satisfied with your goodness. Now, lead me through this, Father. And we listen for his word concerning that. Whether it's his written word, whether it's his word spoken, and that place we hear it is in that secret place of praise, going before his, and and encountering him in his presence. And hearing him, that's that relationship we have that he has for us. If you aren't familiar, if you aren't walking in that, He's provided it. We can walk in it. We can daily hear from our good, good father who has the answer, who's made the provision. And we don't just have to, you know, think, okay, it's all up to me to bear this. Jesus bore it all. We don't have to carry the burden and, 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 and figure out what are we going to do? No, he has the answers. He has the plan. And He'll tell us. He speaks to us. And so the place of praise and worship we come to because we know the source and we receive. 
I have to tell you a cute story. I've got to get this story out. I've always loved it, and I just am going to tell you this. <laughs> um, because you know the Father. You know his faithfulness. You know what he's given you. And so you can expect him to, to give it. You can receive it. You can be ready to receive it. Uh, we have a little three-year-old granddaughter. She's four now, but at the time she was three. And um, Terry, Grandpa, is the source, her source, for gummies. <laughs> so cute. Because Terry is so faithful. He's a good, good Grandpa. Just like our good, good Heavenly Father. He's the source. He's Hadley's source for gummies. And every time he's so faithful, Terry is so faithful to pack those gummies, to give her those gummies. And she looks for those gummies. But one time, because she knows, she can rely on her good, good grand, grandpa. But um, so <clears throat> she knew that always going to the K-State games, grandpa would have these lifesaver gummies. And... Uh, he, that's how she started, you know, getting them uh, at the K-State games. He'd always bring the gummies. And so here, and then any other time too, but um, so Hadley's walking along. So they get out of the car. We hadn't seen him. And Terry previously had put the gummies in his car. He had cargo shorts on, so he had a pocket here. And he just slid the package in the pocket and didn't say a thing the kids got out of the car, Grandpa, Grandma, hugs. And, and I loaded up one kid and took off, and Kyle and Cecily and Hadley and Terry went on to the game. And uh, so as they're walking, nothing was said. Nothing was said. They're just walking and talking. And pretty soon this little three-year-old comes alongside her grandpa, and she says, Grandpa, I can hear my gummies. <laughs> And that just, when Terry told me that, that just went off in me. That in her belief, in her faith in her grandpa, in knowing her grandpa and how much he loves her and all that she knows he has given and provided for her, she could hear the sound of that provision. Before she even saw it, she heard it. And it always took me back, takes me back when I think of that. I always think back to the, the um, Elijah and his servant. And when Elijah said, I hear the abundance of rain. When the, the um, drought was being, when Elijah spoke and said, there's no rain. Well, then there was, the release came to that the rain was coming. And Elijah said, I hear the abundance, the sound of the abundance of rain. And his servant looked and there was no no sign of it. There was no evidence. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. But Elijah had the word of the Father God that said when that was going to come, when it was going to be released, and Elijah spoke it out based on knowing how faithful God was to deliver on that word. And so he, you know, just the sound of the abundance of rain. Well, Hadley heard the sound of the abundance of her gummies. And I just get tickled because I just relate to that. But that's what happens in the secret place of the Most High God, where we're fellowshipping with Him, where we're thanking Him for all of His provision. And we hear the sound of that provision. We hear the sound of how He's going to provide it. Or, you know, I mean, just the steps to walk the direction we need at times to know how to receive that. But we receive in that place of praise and worship. Um, and we come to the place, to that place to receive. As I was referring to Doug's word from the other night, as I said before, it was such a sweet time. It was two weeks ago, I believe. And it was just such a sweet time. I loved the 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 entering in of of the of worshiping in the spirit and this is how we were raised in this church if anybody of you are are new or i mean 
those who are new to this or haven't been a part of faith. I mean, that's the foundation of our church, and that's how we were taught to praise in the Spirit and to wait upon the Holy Spirit for His direction, His Word. And, you know, I, I, and I love that. I think as a corporate body, as we come together, again, like Malia has said and, and Sherry has said, you know, there is things that happen during that time in a church service. It's not just sit, sing three songs and sit down. That's not what we, who we are. That's not how God has taught us. That's not how we were raised. We were raised to hear what the Lo word of the Lord is saying to us as a body, as individuals. It's also a time as an individual in the midst of a bo body, as we're all praising and, and singing, you know, in the spirit, praising in the spirit as one is a time again to receive. It's not a time to say, will you? Is it your will? No. As you know what his will is, and we know his will is to provide goodness, good health, healing, everything he is that he has given us according to his word, it's time to receive so whatever you come in from whatever kind of week you had, it's time to receive. If you hadn't had that time prior, you think, oh, good. Sunday morning, let's go to church. We're going to receive. And like Sherry was saying, sometimes those trips to Sunday church have been some of the worst battles that they've had in the car with the family <laughs> because the enemy doesn't want you about the father's business of going before him and receiving. And just like Sherry had said today, she said the enemy's lies will keep you from praising and worship. And those same lies, is what I'm saying, adding to that, those same lies will also keep you from receiving when you think about it. Let me just share with you again Doug's word, because this is when it really went off in me as he gave that word after that. Well, we were in still in that time of, of worship and praise and waiting on the Lord. And as he was giving this, there was just things that went off in me. And I had shared a little bit about how I saw what God was, you know, how I kind of saw it in a picture. But just to refresh your memory, here's what uh, the word that the Lord gave Doug. It was July 28th, actually. And it says for and what's so cool about this, as I shared uh, Wednesday, Sherry, on Wednesday, prior to July 28th, had shared about the power of praise and worship and the secret place. And then here this, that Sunday, that fo following Sunday, July 28th, here the Lord gives it again. It's like, again, that confirmation um, through this word. So let me read it to you. The Lord said, for that place I have called you to is a hiding place. It is a secret place, saith the Lord. In that place, all needs are met. In that place, provision is provided. In that place, there is healings and miracles. In that place, I call the secret place. In that place is where I have called you to dwell. I have said this over and over and over to you, saith the Lord. And I say it again, come unto that place. Come to that place where you walk with me. Come to that place where you reside with me. Come to that place where my presence overwhelms you, saith the Lord. In the cool of the day, as Adam would come, and I would minister and be with him, saith God. That is the place I have called you to, but it is a much better place than what even Adam had, had, saith God. But I say to you this day, come to that place, that secret place, saith the Lord. That's the word that was spoken. And as in the middle of that, especially at that one line that says, in that place provision is provided. Well, I just got this picture of the person going out and ringing the bell and saying, come and get it. Come and get it. 
And I could just see, you know, I mean, imagining, and, but also just vivid, you know, people coming to the table that God's provided with everything that Jesus made available to us to receive. And they're coming into a place where, again, here's the Father, here's the Son. All provision has been made, and the Holy Spirit's there also. And God is so pleased to have us come to him for our need. And so as the call went out, come and get it. People ran to partake of what God had provided. And as they come to that table of blessing, there's the Holy Spirit, and, and he's directing them as to what they need, how, you know, here, this, here, take this, take that. This is what you need. This is what I have for you. And that's what we get when we're in that time of praise and worship. God just begins to give, you know, show us details of how to go about to receive and, and what he has for us and the steps to take. Um, and just, just the idea that, uh, I mean, just the, the provision that he, that he has and how pleased, again, just how pleased he is when we come. And um, again, there can be some things that based on different um, uh, ways we were taught or different little residue things that are, have hung on that are based out of wrong teaching. Again, I refer to it, if you think God isn't a good God, if you think God doesn't give good things, that will hinder. But when we know our good heavenly Father has given all things good that are required to live in this world, why would we turn down his invitation to come and receive? You know, when you think about it. Why would we turn that invitation down to come and eat and receive? It's because we don't know how good he is. And there's, because... You know, either you've been taught that, people have been taught that, or you just haven't developed that knowledge of him, that knowledge that there is available. And therefore, the lack of that knowledge can keep you from receiving all that he has. When we know that our good, good father has made provision and provided, why would we ask him for what he has already given? So you think, okay, the call goes out, come and get it. Now, what a sad picture it would be if you, you're coming and, and then you stop. It, you know, if, if, picture yourself if, if, you, if somebody's you know, made this provision for you and you see it, but then you sit there before you partake of it and say, please give this. Dear God, please do this, do that. Dear God, please, when he's already done it, when he's already made provision. Now, God is there joyfully saying, come and get it. Come and receive. Provision has been made. Come and receive. And we come in and we say, thank you, Father. Wouldn't that be our first response? When you know provision has been made for something, if you're invited to somebody's house and they work so hard to put out this spread. Oh, you'd come in and you'd go, oh, thank you. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you for everything you did to make this provision for me. Or would you come in and go, oh, I'm not good enough to receive all that. Oh, I'll just sit outside on the porch and eat whatever's left over. Or, you know, I mean, or you look at it and you you don't really believe it's for you. And so you spend all this time thinking, well, I need to do this. I need to, you know, act it or, you know, just do all these things before I feel worthy enough to receive what already has been provided. So a lot of times we get caught in those things of asking God for what he's already given to us. It says he's given us the nations. And I think that's where, as you go into praise and worship and you spend time with him and, and you're just enjoying his presence and you're waiting on him and he drops 
things into you about certain situations out in the world and certain nations or, or states or your county, your state, your city. You know, don't just say, well, God, do this, do that. Begin to declare what he tells you, what he's already provided. God, you've provided salvation and I decree salvation over our, our city. I decree people's hearts to, to uh, uh, open up and, and that you, your love will be revealed to them. That they'll know you as a good, good father. That they will, you know, people will cross their paths and minister your goodness and your love. Lord, that their hearts will be opened. You open the hearts, Lord. Your Holy Spirit makes the way. And it's not just thinking and hoping and praying that, you know, but you're standing and believing and decreeing and you're receiving. Thank you, Lord, for your glory that rolls over our nation. Thank you, God, for your glory and your presence, for the light that repels and, and cancels out all the darkness. Thank you, Lord. And a lot of people who think, well, no, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And then really, really, really bad. And then Jesus will come back. I believe the path of the righteous is like the light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And it overtakes the darkness. It reveals the darkness. But because of who we are, and the power and authority he gives us, we speak to the darkness. And as we do that, I mean, things change. Lives change. Situations change. So I just want to encourage all of us, myself, that you come. When he says come, go and partake. Receive all that he has. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything stop you. But the key is that place, that praise, time of praise and worship, that time you spend, however, you know, all day, every day, hearing, listening throughout the day. And Sherry gave such good examples of, you know, and we know this, you know, it, it just does not have to be a one-time occurrence once a week. No, it's a daily. It's, it's your, your thinking about God. God, I praise you. I thank you. Thank you, God, you give me strength to do this, to do that. Lord, what about this as I'm going here and he, going there? And, and, you know, there's no fear when you're in the presence of God. It says that in the Word. There's no fear in the perfect love of God. So as we go, and, and yes, there's fear out there, but I'm not going to partake of that fear. I encountered somebody the other day, and, or yesterday, and, and, um, and it, was just, it was just different, but I understood. But because of just this stuff in the news and what's going on out there and the horrible shooting that happened in, at the Walmart, you know, and, and so this person I saw, I hadn't seen him for a long time, and I said, well, I, I usually see you at Walmart, and, uh, you know, our Walmart and Dylan's little social places <laughs> where you see a lot of people. But anyway, and she's, her immediate words were, oh, and it's, you, I just don't even want to go to Walmart. He says, you go to Walmart and, and you don't even know what's going to happen. I mean, she just, it was just that fearful state. Bringing up the word Walmart was just ignited in her the state of fear as to whether to go there or not, and you never know if you go there what's going to happen. Well, I know if I go there, nothing's going to happen because I'm protected. And I take that authority, and I take that territory, I take that place as I'm walking and as I'm going into places. Someone else said they have such a fear of passing uh, a vehicle with these big high loads or... or um, like the big hay round bales, you know. And they said because based on when they were a little girl or a younger girl or whenever it was that one of their friends, and, and very unfortunate, uh, as she was passing a vehicle, one of the straps broke and one of the part of the load fell and it, she ended up losing her life. But 35 years later or however many, 40 years later, here this person 
every time she comes behind a big load. Oh, that thing replays. And she passes, she's try, or she holds back. She just slows down. Or she tr really tries to get around it fast. You know, and that thinking is what, you know, I mean, it's not freedom. Jesus has provided freedom, freedom from those thoughts of destruction, freedom from that. And because the angels surround me, because the angels bear me up, because the angels are going before me and spreading, making the way of protection for every place I go. Thank you, Lord. And so that causes me to go to my good, good father and say, thank you, Father, that you've provided protection for me. Always, at all times, I am protected. I am healed. I am whole. I am sound. That's making Jesus your source for everything. And if there is an attack However, whatever happens, I mean, you know, just whatever circumstances arise, you know Jesus is your source, and you will be delivered. You will be set free. And I'm thanking God for so many things I've been hearing lately of people that are, have been in dire, have heard horrible reports, but God is walking them right out of it based on their response, based on them looking to him their source, based on them saying, thank you, Father. This will, speaking to that situation in the name of Jesus, speaking to that situation based on, God, how do you want me to handle this? You know, sometimes we just know based on the word of God, based on what Jesus did. Jesus went about laying hands on the sick and they recovered. Well, I'm laying hands. But it's still asking God the exact direction. There's not any formula that you just always quickly pull out of your pocket and say, okay, it's always done like this. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, step one, two, three. Okay, that's how it's done. No, it's, then we rely on the formula. Then we rely on those steps. Well, I missed step two. That's probably why I didn't get it. I missed step four. Oh, you know. No, it's that conversation, that relationship, we go to him. Father, you, ha you have the provision made before I even knew I had a need. Before I knew. And so, you know, we rely upon that. He, we're making him our source. I want to close with Isaiah 55, 12, and we're, or 1 and 2, um, and we're going to get out early or at least Corey's going to get out a little bit early <laughs> as I end this and he closes it down um, Isaiah 55 said here's another invitation to come you know we heard that in Matthew when Jesus said come unto me all you who are tired of just this repetition type of religion that you, and the works and the performance, and, and are you tired of that? Is it not producing? You know, it's, it's not producing. And are you tired of that state you're living in where you're not seeing the results? You're working so hard and you're not, there's just not the results. Come to me, Jesus said. I will give you refreshment, relaxation. I will, it will be easy if you take on my way of doing it. If you take on my words, the words I have about that situation that I have treasured for you, come to me and I'll show you how to do it. And so in Isaiah, before Jesus ever was, but again, it's pointing to Jesus. It says, wait and listen, everyone who is thirsty. Come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. Now, isn't that good? It wasn't, come, 
receive simply based on all these steps that you take to get, you know, thinking you have to know. Simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we just come to you and we thank you. Lord, we praise you. We worship you, O oh God. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we thank you for your provision for everything Jesus has provided. Has provided. You've made it available to all of us. And so, Father, I just thank you. I thank you that to those of us who are in need of healing in our bodies, I thank you that, Father, that in the name of Jesus, they are healed. I thank you that sickness leaves in Jesus' name. We speak to sickness. We speak to weakness. We speak to anything that is not functioning as you have ordered it to function. And Father, we call those things into compliance to your will. Those parts of our body that need repair, those parts of our body that um, just are not operating the way they need to, we call those into compliance to comply with your will. Your will of healing, your will of provision, your will of divine health. Lord, I release that health and healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Lord, I thank you, I thank you. Thank you that it is your will. You, with great joy, have provided for us complete and total restoration, redemption, deliverance, protection, everything that Jesus gave, the abundance of it, we receive, and we thank you, Father. Thank you for the invitation, Lord, to come. Thank you, Lord. And we say yes. And we come and we, we receive and we thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory to you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.